Product life cycle management refers to the process of managing a product as it moves through the typical stages of its product life. It is the integration of all aspect of product from its development to its ultimate decline. The ultimate goal of product life cycle management is to simplify all process in order to create a product that outshines competitors, is profitable and lasts as long as customer demand and technology allow. Through this video, you will learn all the basic concepts related to product life cycle management. You will also understand the different stages in the product life cycle management and its evolution over a period of time. So stay tuned and learn all that you can about product life cycle management. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Hello, my name is Shantanu Rana and today I am going to teach you this course on product life cycle management by great learning. Whenever we buy a product, there is an entire life cycle of that product starting from its introduction in the market space to its retirement or its decline in the market we have to manage the entire life cycle of this product and that is something we will be exploring in this particular course we will be understanding each and everything about product life cycle management what are the different phases what are the different stages involved in this we'll also be understanding the usage of product life cycle management softwares and what are the must haves for these softwares how it can make processes very very simple for any organization all these things we are going to explore in this particular course one after the another so let's not waste any time and directly move to the agenda first thing that we are going to discuss in this particular course is understanding product life cycle management where i'll be telling you what exactly is plm or you can say product life cycle management and how it is different from pdm that is product data management we'll be understanding the difference then the five phases of product development starting from its introduction in the market space to its retirement or decline in the market we'll be understanding the five phases then the four stages of product life cycle management then the evolution of plm over a period of time then the benefits of plm how it is benefiting all the organizations and the different firms in different sectors then product life cycle management software and what are the must haves for these different softwares then closed loop manufacturing cycle and how it is different from the linear cycle of plm then scm crm and plm that is supply chain management customer relationship management and plm that is product life cycle management how these three terms are interrelated to each other but what is the difference between these three terms each of these things we are going to understand in this particular course one after the another all right so let's start by understanding what exactly is product life cycle management so what is plm or product life cycle management plm refers to the process of managing a product as it moves through the typical stages of its product life you talk about any product first of all there is an idea there is design then the manufacturing happens then it is introduced into the market after taking feedback and revising it continuously once it is introduced in the market then the growth happens and after that eventually any product will be declined or will be retired from the market space this entire journey is nothing but product life cycle managing this product life cycle is your plm that is product life cycle management it is the integration of all aspects of a product from its development to its ultimate decline it's not just about creating the product and then launching it into the market it is more than that it also includes the marketing segmentation the customer segmentation all those things will also be part of the product life cycle and hence will be part of plm so if in general we have to define plm we can simply say that it is the integration of all the aspects of a product from its development to its ultimate decline in the market space each and everything each and every step is included in plm whatever is there in the product life cycle from the design to its launching in the market to its retirement everything is included in plm it is not just about creating or launching the product in the market it is much more than that there are three main elements of plm 
definitely number one is the information and the communication technology which includes platforms systems tools so there are so many softwares for plm as well we'll be discovering all those softwares and what are the advantages of having those softwares later on in the second half of this particular uh, course and then second is the processes that is which includes uh, people skills and organizations which are involved in that particular product life cycle management and then the methods the procedures rules practices even if you are designing something you are creating a particular product there will be some kind of procedure that you will have to follow there will be some rules and regulations that you will have to follow there can be some government rules also which can come into the picture so all those things you'll have to keep in your mind and eventually these three elements will be very very important in plm that is the information communication technology which includes mostly the software tools and technologies then the processes which includes the skills people and the organizations involved and then the methods which includes the procedures rules and regulations then there are some important points that i have mentioned over here related to product life cycle management so plm involves all stages from product development and production processes to its marketing and customer segmentation so generally a lot of students a lot of people have this doubt that product life cycle management is just about having an idea and eventually putting it into the vision and launching the product into the market space but it is more than that it is not just about developing uh, or producing the process the product it is more than that it is also about marketing and customer segmentation of that particular product into the market space then plm gives an understanding of when to ramp up or minimize manufacturing efforts when do you need to maximize the manufacturing efforts when do you need to minimize the manufacturing efforts those things can easily be predicted if you have proper product life cycle management in place then the ultimate goal of product life cycle management is to streamline all the processes and produce a product that outperforms its competitors is profitable and lasts as long as customer demand and technology allow customer demands keep on changing you have a product today it will grow today but in future time maybe customers will not demand this kind of product some kind of creativity some other type of innovation will be required so each and every product once it is introduced into the market it grows but eventually there comes a time when it actually is declined when it is rejected by the market space so this is the entire journey of any product which is known as product life cycle now how a project is designed how a particular product is launched into the market how it grows what are the different innovations creativity involved in that how it is marketed what is the customer segmentation like all these things are nothing but part of plm that is product life cycle management now let's try to understand a simple difference between plm and pdm plm is nothing but product life cycle management and pdm is nothing but product data management so lot of people are confused between these two terms these two terms are definitely interconnected we can actually say pdm is a subset of plm that is product data management is a part of product life cycle management but these two terms cannot be interchangeable let's try to understand so plm oversees every aspect of the product from conception or inception to disposal however pdm manages all of the data concerned with the product so when we talk about pdm as the name suggests it is about the data management and it is mostly till the stage when the market uh, space is ready for the product to get launched but when we talk about plm it oversees every aspect of the product from conception to how it's launched into the market to marketing to disposal and finally to retirement or the decline of the particular product but pdm is only involved or manages the data which is concerned with the product so we can simply say that pdm is a small part of plm pdm focuses solely on recording and maintaining product information throughout its creation and useful life what do we mean when we say useful life for which the product is actually growing into the market space but there comes a time when the product will not grow anymore because the customer demands will change and that is the stage for decline or retirement that is not included in pdm but it is included in plm whereas plm manages every aspect of product's life cycle including the retirement or the decline stage which is definitely after the useful life of the particular product so these are certain important things that you should definitely keep in your mind about plm in simple words we can say that plm and pdm are interrelated terms but are not interchangeable 
PDM can be defined as a subset of PLM because in PDM we consider only till the useful life but in PLM we consider the useful life as well as the retirement or the decline of the product into the market space. Alright, so now that we have understood what exactly is product life cycle management, it is time for us to discuss the five phases of product development. Whenever we talk about the development of a product, what are the different phases, different stages involved in that? That is something we will be exploring in this particular module. So the first phase is concept and design. First of all, you have a concept, then the designing happens or the manufacturing happens. All the procedures, rules, regulations, whatever is there that is kept in mind, whatever the competition we will be having that is kept in mind, proper gap analysis is done between the customer demands and the product requirements and then particularly a product is designed. So that is the first phase. Then comes the development phase where the product is actually developed and it is distributed in the market. That comes the third step that the product will be introduced into the market. And then finally, it will be distributed to the different uh, stakeholders, different customers, then support and service. And then finally, the retirement of the particular product, that is the withdrawal of the product from the market. So let's talk about each of these stages, five stages in much more detail. So as you can say, the first thing is concept and design. That is the first phase when we talk about product development. So number one thing which is involved in that is competitor analysis. Now, whatever product you will be developing, is it related to all other products which are there in the market? It is completely new product. It is new kind of innovation or something which is similar to other products. You have to do the proper competitor analysis. You have to see who will be your competition in the market if you launch this product later on. Then gaps in the market. What is this gap all about? So there are customer demands. Based upon those customer demands, we have to define our product or the product requirements. So first of all, we need to know what are the customer needs, what are the customer demands, then we need to know what will be the requirement of the product by understanding that gap. So that gap analysis becomes very, very important. If the customer demands are completely different from what kind of product you are developing, then there will be no point. You will not be able to grow that product into the market later on. So in order to make sure that you are relevant into the market space, you have to make sure that you meet the customer demands or you exceed the customer demands. And in order to do that, you have to do a proper gap analysis, a proper competitor analysis. Once that is done, then we reach the second stage, which is nothing but development. So detailed product design is done in this particular stage. The product design, the prototype design, then the feedback is taken. Once that is done, then further refinements based on the feedback is done. So basic prototype will be ready in the second stage in the development phase. Once that is done, then we reach the third stage which is production and launch. So market ready version of the product is ready and then launch and distribution to the market happens. So the uh, particular product will be launched or will be introduced into the market and then the distribution to the market will also take place. Once that is done, then we reach the next stage, which is the fourth stage service and support. Now the product is sold to the customers. We have to provide them service. We have to provide them support. That is also very, very important. This comes under the product lifecycle management again. Then finally, once the customer needs will be different. So eventually, once a product is launched into the market, after a point of time, there will be a stage of maturity. There will be a stage of saturation when that product will no more be relevant into the market space until unless there is some innovation, there is some creativity that you are doing with that product continuously. So product withdrawal from the market will happen and absorption into the new concept ideas that what you can do with that particular product, what different uh, things you can apply so that it is still relevant into the market. So that becomes the part of the fifth stage, which is the retirement or also known as the decline stage. So these are the five stages that we have in product development. So first of all, we have a concept, then the product is designed, it is developed, it is manufactured, uh, seeing all the procedures, rules and regulations that we have. Once that is done, then, then it is uh, launched into the market and then it is distributed to the market. Once that is done, customers have taken the product, service and support is provided to those customers and finally once the product is irrelevant in the market or it needs uh, uh, innovation creativity then it is withdrawn from the uh, market and some new concept ideas are absorbed so that we can uh, do some kind of modification to that product uh, in order to make sure that that product will be still relevant in the market and customer needs will still be met or will be exceeded all right so now that we have understood what exactly is PLM or product lifecycle management 
and we have seen what are the different stages in product development starting from introduction in the market to its retirement what are the different stages now it is time for us to discuss about the main steps in the product life cycle management whenever we talk about a product life cycle management what are the different steps which are involved in this how it is introduced into the market space and what is the last stage how it reaches the maturity these are divided into four steps as you can see on the screen number one is introduction then growth then maturity and then finally decline so these are the four major steps in plm or product life cycle management when we talk about introduction of the product this is when all the research happens and the new product is introduced it is about the conception and the designing prototype is ready but once we talk about the market ready version of the particular product then starts the growth phase that the product is manufactured marketed and released so it also includes the marketing and the customer segmentation part then increase in distribution demand and competition in simple words we can say that in the second stage the product will start growing into the market there will be increase in competition there will be increase in the customer demands there will be increase in the distribution of the product to meet the customer demands to meet the consumer demands then comes the maturity stage that the product will reaches the maturity of the particular launching into the market space so product will be widely available advertisements will have no strong impact on the product demand at this particular stage and then finally we reach to the decline stage where the product demand actually decreases because it is no more relevant for the uh, customers customer demands are exceeding but the product keeps on becoming more and more irrelevant until unless some new concept is applied some innovation is applied to that particular uh, product so product becomes obsolete so this is the general phase for any particular product first of all a product is launched into the market it is introduced into the market then based upon the uh, customer demands and the competition we will keep on improving that particular product it will keep on growing and there will be a time when it will reach the maturity once the product is fully matured it is widely available then the advertisements will also have no such impact on that particular product once we reach that stage after that the product demand will keep on decreasing and eventually the product will become uh, obsolete so these are the four main stages as you can see in this graph as well in the introduction phase we see the graph is linear so it keeps on increasing and then the growth happens but when we talk about maturity after that the scale is actually decreasing or the sale is actually decreasing we can see in the decline phase the product will keep on becoming more and more irrelevant into the market and it will eventually become obsolete so first of all once the market space uh, will launch the product it will keep on growing then it will become mature and then eventually the sale will decrease or it will be declined by the market space let's try to understand these four stages with the help of a very simple example let's take juice as a product so first of all juice becomes available in the food stores in plain packaging this is one important thing that it is available in the plain packaging we have just launched the product so this is nothing but the first stage that is the introduction stage then we reaches the second stage that is growth now juice becomes available in big grocery stores so initially it was only available in the food stores now seeing the market seeing the customer demands we have launched it into the big grocery stores as well so this is one growth step the new types of juices are introduced let's say first of all we were only selling the carrot juice now we have some other types of juice as well, as well we have cranberry juice we have orange juice we have carrot juice we have different type of juices now that is also a part of growth phase then packaging is redesigned to be more attractive to consumers so initially if you see in the introduction phase we were selling in the plain packaging but now as the market space is growing and the product is getting distributed to the larger set of customers we are uh, redesigning the packaging in order to make it more attractive for the consumers or the customers then comes the third phase that is maturity the product will be widely available the juice will be widely available calorie count is reduced that is it is further uh, we are redesigning it we are re-innovating with that calorie count is reduced so that people can find it more attractive and more and more customers can buy it the taste is also made better again to increase the customers then different types of packaging are offered now this is the stage once the product will be fully available in the market and the product is widely available now this is the matured stage for that particular product and then once the product is matured then the declining will start which is the fourth stage that due to extreme competition the product is becoming obsolete 
let's say there is a new competition that has come into the market in the field of juices and those juices are now becoming more relevant for the newer generation and the customer demand is uh, decreasing for this particular type of product that you, that we were selling so this is the basic journey for any product first of all it is introduced into the market then it will grow we will also keep on innovating in order to increase the number of customers who are buying your product then finally it will reach the maturity stage where it will be widely available to the crowd and eventually it will start decline and people will have to withdraw it from the market because it is no more relevant and the product will become obsolete so these are the four main stages whenever we talk about any market in the product life cycle management all right now let's talk about evolution of product life cycle management how product life cycle management has evolved over a period of time as you can see on the screen the first point says that the concept of product life cycle management was first proposed in 1931 so this entire journey actually started in 1930s then around 1957 an employee of the advertising agency booz allen hamilton proposed a five step life cycle for products starting with introduction and progressing through growth and maturity to saturation and decline as we have already seen that there are five stages number one is introduction then growth then maturity and then finally decline so it has one more point that is saturation which started in 1957 then in 1985 amc that is american motors corporation adopted plm or you can say product life cycle management to improve processes and compete more efficiently to speed up its product development so initially companies were taking a lot of time in manufacturing the product but amc was the first uh, company which actually adopted plm and it helped the company in increasing the speed of the product development and that's where it all started in 1980s then in today's world customers demand customized and personalized or you can say high quality products and services more quickly so initially customers are happy with a lot of things that they were getting from the these companies but these days customer demands have changed and you have to exceed or meet those customer demands in order to be relevant in the market space so customers demand customized and personalized products and they need high quality products within less time so that is the deal that we have to break when you are talking about product development in any organization plm is no more just a buzzword it plays a critical role in helping organizations get products to market faster and in boosting innovation whenever you talk about any product the product requirements will only be defined once you know the customer needs if you do not know what what the customer is demanding you will never be able to provide them the right fit the right kind of product in order to provide them the right product which is relevant for them which is personalized for them which is customized for them we should have a basic understanding of the competition that we have around we should have the basic understanding of the customer needs or the consumer demands once we have done the basic analysis we know this gap between the product requirement and the customer needs we need to fill that gap the gap should be as less as possible once that will be done then we will be relevant in the market and plm is uh, something which ensures that it is not just a uh, buzzword anymore it make sure that it will help your organization in getting your product to the market faster and it will boost the innovation and creativity so starting from the first phase where a conception is there from its designing to manufacturing to all the procedures it can help in all the processes there are so many plm softwares that is product life management software that we have today which can actually help the organizations in developing the product much faster and in a much smoother and efficient way so that's the beauty of product life cycle management now let's talk about the benefits of plm or product life cycle management so first of all let's try to understand that why do companies need plm at the first place what is the requirement of product life cycle management why can't they just develop a project and then a product and launch it into the market what is the need of having a particular plm software or tool so organizations that produce goods face a variety of difficulties that aren't just related to design and production so it is a common myth that when we talk about manufacturing of a product we think that related to a product the only issue is with the manufacturing or with the design or production but no there are issues related to marketing there are issues related to customer segmentation as well and that is something which is ensured by plm so organizations that produce goods or products face a variety of difficulties which are not just related to design and production it is much more than that where plm can actually help 
then PLM addresses and mitigates those difficulties, those issues which are not even design and production. It can be related to customer segmentation. It can be related to making processes efficient. It can be related to making processes uh, further effective. So all these things will come under PLM and it can actually help organizations in meeting the customer demands in a more efficient, in a more smooth way. Then initially PLM was created to aid engineers in collaborating and controlling information throughout the product useful lifespan. But now retirement and decline is also a part of it. It is not just a buzzword. It is much more than that, as we have discussed previously as well. That PLM as a technique has expanded to a broader range of functions, including customer support, marketing, sales and partner channels. It is not just about launching the product and then uh, growing it into the market. It is also about how you're going to market it. It is also about the sales of it. It is also about the support and the service that the customers will be getting once the product is distributed. It is also about the partner channels. All these things will be included in PLM that is product lifecycle management. And to do this or to do or to manage all these processes efficiently and effectively, we definitely need PLM and that's why companies actually need PLM. In order to define the benefits of PLM, we can start with increase in revenue. So definitely if you are going to manage all the uh, processes in the product life cycle very, very efficiently, overall the revenue will be increased, cost will be reduced, elimination of errors, errors will be less, especially if you are managing it with the help of a software. So if humans are involved, there are chances that the mistakes will be there. But if there is a tool that we have, there is a technology or a software that we have for PLM or product life cycle management, elimination of error will be one uh, very good advantage that we will get. Then reduce time to market. So launching uh, the product into the market, developing the product, all this time will be reduced and all these things will be uh, speeding up. Then uh, improved product quality. Overall quality will be uh, very good because the revenue is going to increase. The eliminations are going to decrease. That will give rise to increase in the product quality. Then maximized product value over the product life scan and then driving innovation, creativity. All these things will also be part of PLM. That is one more benefit than single source of accountability. Especially if you have a PLM software, it will be accountable for all the things. Introduction into the market that is there. Uh, you talk about launching the product into the market or distributing it into the market. You talk about marketing, you talk about customer segmentation. Each and everything uh, will have one thing which is accountable for all of those processes. That is that PLM software. So that's the beauty of having PLM. We can manage all these processes starting from introduction of the product to its decline in the market with just one software, with just one tool. All right. So now that we have understood that what exactly is the requirement of PLM by different companies and what are the benefits that those companies will be getting with the help of PLM, let's try to understand more about these PLM softwares, that is product life management tools or softwares. So what is a PLM software at the first place? PLM software is a solution that handles all of the data and processes at every stage of a product life cycle. There are different stages in product life cycle. Uh, starting from its concept, design to development to its growth and finally to its decline in the market. There are different different stages that a product goes through in the market. So managing all those processes, all that data, all those uh, procedures, that is nothing is done by a PLM software. That is a solution to all those issues, all those management processes. This includes managing information during the development of a product from inception through the manufacturing, servicing and disposal processes. So if you see development of the product, that will be part of it. Inception, that is the conception, ideation, that will also be part of it. Then manufacturing will also be part of it. Supporting and servicing the customers, that will also be part of it. And finally, the decline of the product, or you can say the disposal processes, that will also be part of it. So this is a PLM software is one solution which can handle all these processes which are involved in the product life cycle. Then organizations use PLM software to increase productivity and collaboration, improve product quality, boost innovation and shorten time to market for a product. As I have already told you that when we have a PLM software in place, we have a particular tool in place, the time to uh, market for which the product is launched, that time is decreased. The shortened time will be there uh, in order to launch the particular product into the market. The manufacturing will become more speedy. The processes will become very, very efficient and eventually it will help the organization. So that's the beauty of having a PLM software. There are some PLM software must-haves that is data sharing, 
So definitely when there's a lot of collaboration, when you talk about launching a product into the market, there are so many teams involved. Sometimes there are so many organizations involved, internal and external collaboration is required. So data sharing should be one thing, which is a part of PLM softwares. Then second is change management. If you talk about today's world because of COVID, each and everything has changed. So if you talk about uh, launching a product, so we should definitely keep in mind the change management as well. That if there is any change, there are processes which are changing abruptly. How are we going to manage all of that? That should also be included in PLM, then project management and finally PLM integrations. It can be integrations with other websites, with other applications. So in order to for the team to actually collaborate properly, actually innovate and creatively think about the ideas in order to launch the product into the market. So that these are some must has which should be there in any PLM software. And that's how a PLM software helps any organization in achieving uh, the uh, actual sales that they want to get for a particular product in order to market the product, in order to provide the right kind of service, right kind of support to the product. A PLM software can help in all those processes. All right. Now let's talk about closed loop manufacturing cycle. So we have already discussed uh, the PLM that is product life cycle management and we have discussed that there are four stages in that introduction, growth, maturity and decline. We have seen that first of all a product is introduced into the market. It is launched and distributed into the market which is the part of introduction stage. Once that is done then it starts growing. There is a lot of innovation. There are a lot of things that we reapply and see different things in order to meet or exceed the customer demands. That is the growing phase, growth phase. And then the maturity that the product will be widely available and it is it has reached the saturation level after that it starts declining which is the retirement phase decline phase so these are the four main phases whenever we talk about product life cycle management but this is a very linear approach the linear plm or product life cycle management has resource inputs at every stage and it produces waste outputs which can have a negative impact on the environment the closed loop manufacturing cycle is uh, nothing but an extension of PLM. So if you talk about these four stages that first of all, we'll introduce the product, then the growth will happen, then it will reach maturity and then finally it will be declined. So this is a linear approach that we have where each and every stage will require some kind of input and there will be some kind of output at every stage. Whatever output we'll have at the decline stage, that will be wastage basically. And that wastage can have a very negative impact on the environment. Now, how can we deal with that? We can deal with that by having a closed loop manufacturing cycle, which is nothing but an extended version of PLM product life cycle management, this linear approach that we have. It is the extended version of it. So rather than merely disposing the obsolete or used products, closed loop manufacturing generates a complete full life cycle. What it does is whatever output we are getting from the decline phase, it uses that output as the input for introduction phase and that way it becomes a full life cycle for the particular product. So first of all, the product will be introduced, then the growth will happen, then it will reach the maturity, then it will be declined by the market. But those obsolete products will take as input for the introduction phase. Once again, you can take the example of this company called Dell. It uh, produces laptops. So this company started this takeaway uh, approach a uh, while ago where it started taking the used laptop which are declined by the customers and it started manufacturing new laptops with the material uh, from those used laptops. So with that we can actually have a very positive impact on the environment and overall the negative uh, impact on the environment will be very very less and we'll be able to save cost time energy and money as well. As you can see on the screen there are so many benefits of having a closed loop manufacturing cycle. Number one is less negative impact on the environment because overall fewer carbon emissions in the manufacturing process will be there and then cheaper and more effective. This process is cheaper because whatever output we are getting from the decline phase, we are using it as the input for the introduction phase. So we can save on a lot of time, energy and money at that particular level. And that's how we should. Uh, there are a lot of companies which are actually going for closed loop manufacturing cycle these days. All right. So now that we have understood what exactly is product life cycle management, what are the different benefits of it, how it benefits different organizations, what is closed loop manufacturing cycle. After having a basic understanding of all that, now it is time for us to establish a relationship between SCM, CRM and PLM. Now you must be thinking what is SCM, CRM or PLM. 
PLM we already know is product life cycle management. In this module, we will be seeing how PLM is related to SCM that is supply chain management and CRM that is customer relationship management. So SCM is nothing but the administration or management of the workflow that takes raw materials and parts from the supplier to the manufacturer, then to the wholesaler, then to the retailer and lastly to the consumer. So in very simple words, SCM is everything from launch or introduction of the product through the distribution in PLM, which includes manufacturing. First of all, we have a concept, we have an idea, we build the prototype, then we build the market uh, ready product and then eventually it is launched and the customers get it. This entire cycle is nothing but your SCM supply chain management and it definitely inclu includes manufacturing as well. So manufacturing and then distributing the product to the customers. That is what SCM is, supply chain management. After this, we have CRM that is customer relationship management. It is the management of present and potential customers as well as their interaction with your organization and data on their transactions. In PLM, CRM is everything that happens after a customer buys a product until it is retired or recycled. So if you see in very simple words, till the time a customer buys a product that comes under SCM, the distribution basically. And after that, CRM starts. That is everything after a customer has bought your particular product. It includes your servicing, supporting the customers, having the interaction with the customers and the organizations, data on their transaction. All of that is nothing but your CRM. So these two are very important parts in any product lifecycle management. All right. So now we have reached the summary part of this particular course. I hope you have understood all the basic modules that we have discussed in this course of product lifecycle management. So let's just summarize all the main points that we have already discussed in this particular course. Number one is product lifecycle management or PLM refers to the process of managing a product as it moves through the typical stages of its product life. First of all, we have a concept, we have an idea, then we do the competitor analysis, we try to understand the customer needs, then we design the product, we have a prototype ready, we take the feedback, we revise that, and eventually by following all the rules, regulations, procedures, we have a market ready version of the product which is ready and that we launch in the market. Once the product is introduced into the market, this part of product life cycle management is nothing but SCM that is supply chain management. Once the product is launched, then comes CRM that is customer relationship management that is service support that will be given to the uh, customers and there will be a stage once the customer needs will increase and our product will no more be relevant into the market. That is the saturation stage or the maturity stage and that's where the decline comes. So this entire life cycle of a particular project management of this is known as product life cycle management. It refers to the process of managing a product as it moves through the typical stages of its product life cycle from introduction to its decline in the market. There are five phases of product development that we have tried to understood. Number one is concept and design, then development of the product, then production and its launch in the market and then support and service which is given to the customer which is a part of CRM that is customer relationship management and then finally the retirement. We have also seen that there is a small difference between PLM and PDM. When we talk about PDM, it is nothing but a part of PLM or a subset of PLM. In PDM, we generally talk about managing the data or the information till the useful life of the product. But in PLM, we discuss the useful life as well as the phase where the product is retired or declined from the market space. We also understood the four stages of PLM or product life cycle management that is introduction, growth, maturity and decline. If we approach it in a linear way, it can have a very negative impact on the environment. But we can also have a closed loop manufacturing cycle where the output of the decline stage can be used as the input for the introduction stage. That's the beauty of the closed loop cycle. If we use it, it will have a very less negative impact on the environment and we will be able to save on cost, time, energy and money definitely. So that's what product life cycle management is all about. Thank you so much for attending this course. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. 
Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments.